Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Happy Healthy Homo, episode 8. Eight. We're on episode eight. And there we go. We've turned into those people now that just re- re- like recite, the, the, say the number, yeah. and then repeat. The other one does it in an incredulous tone after the other one. Eight, eight. eight. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. With there's two months of doing this podcast now. Yeah, and it's really fun. We really appreciate all your messages yes. and all your support and if you do still want to email us or get in touch it's hello at happyhealthyhomo.com yeah see we usually save all this to the end so subscribe and like yeah. and follow and share please, please rate us that. five stars on apple Podcasts. that really helps us where for podcasts they sort of gather all the reviews and things like that so it would really help us if you could it rate us the chart which means it gets shared out to yeah. more people so if you think this is helpful and useful and more mm-hmm. people need to see it hear it Watch it, whatever you're doing with yeah. it, then then rate it, subscribe Bop it, it, like it. Twist it, <laughs> flick it, spill it. I love very that niche game. It's very niche. <laughs> There'll be some people out there that found it funny. Others would be like, what is it's he? It's called Bop It, isn't it? Yeah. It's a game. I love it. Uh, anyway, what are we talking about today, Keegan? Um, I thought we would talk about something that has had a... We've had a lot of messages and comments yeah. and emails about, which is about the whole dating preferences yeah when it comes to apps meeting people mm-hmm. um and the obsession with it within yeah. the gay community mm-hmm. you know that you have to be so tall such a skin color mm-hmm. or not a skin color mm-hmm. or act a certain way or certain penis size yeah that's something that uh, the amount of people that have comment have messaged about that yeah, penis was, size is like a really big topic that people want us to cover but i'm or like not so big or <laughs> 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 yeah it's uh, i'm like oh i've never really like why would people want our opinion on that but i suppose it's something that people don't really talk about and so well but, it's yeah. apparently it's one of the criteria that people are using to discriminate against people on platforms like mm. grinder and we i mean we're gonna talk, we'll probably talk about grinder a bit in this episode but yeah yeah so i think the whole idea that there is this perfect man yeah that consists of over six foot. That seems to be a big thing in the gay community, yeah. doesn't it? If you're under six foot... I'm just foot, shy. I'm 5'11". Um, if you're over six foot, you, white... Mm-hmm. Um, muscular. Muscular. Uh, no fat, no femme, no Actually, Asian. it's probably not even muscular, is it? It's oh. just fitting... And we'll come on to these types, but it's fitting in one of the types. A tribe. A tribe, yeah. yeah. The fet- Well, it's the fetishization of whatever people view as perfect yeah whether it is the being part of a tribe whether it's a bear or whatever yeah. or it is this over six foot white muscular yeah. rich person with a massive chopper yeah like it's this fetish fetishization so the big thing that i want to open this podcast with okay uh, when you're talking about preferences is six foot two yeah is not going to check in on your mental health you know, um, because someone's white, they're not going to have your best interests at heart. Mm. Because someone is has a penis that is bigger than four inches, mm. they're not necessarily going to care about you and help you grow and yeah. support you. You know, it, it's this whole idea that you pick someone based on these really shallow vanity metrics mm. It, realistically you're not viewing that person as a person yeah you're viewing them as a set of stats and yeah. a set of stats you can't have a relationship with that mm. they're not going to look after you you're no. not going to build a fulfilling life with a set of stats it's a human yeah. being that you're looking for but to play devil's avocado that is a really good point in general and it is a great point for dating but i suppose i can hear some people going yeah but if I'm on Grinder, for example, or looking for a hookup, I don't care if they don't have my best interests at heart. I don't care if they, and this is the hard thing of to differentiate between sort of what is just, this is my physical sexual desire. This is my like sort of living a hedonistic lifestyle where I don't care if they're not any of these good qualities. I just want them to tick these boxes versus dating. Absolutely. I'd think, well, why, if you're looking to seriously date and find a partner, you need to take into account way more than that. But it's a really tough subject when it comes to just hookup culture. Well, I mean, that in in and of itself, yeah, you know, if, if, you, if you're looking for a hookup. But it's, again, this thing of preferences, right? Mm. 
uh, you can yeah prefer something but prefer doesn't mean exclude no so when when people say you must be over six foot does that mean that if someone was otherwise everything that you're looking for and they were five yeah. foot eleven you're gonna yeah. go no it's it's the exclusionary nature of yeah. it that you are not these things that you know when people say um no no black people no mm. asian people like so you're saying to me that there is not one black person or asian person or effeminate person yeah. or whatever your exclusionary thing is mm. that you are not attracted to yeah that's that's not a preference that's no. racism yeah exactly <laughs> definitely uh, um and i think people f forget that i think mm. when it comes to hookup culture as well people forget that the person that they're talking to mm. whether they're rejecting them or want to hook up with them they're another human being yeah and like you said granted if it's just a hook up and you're going i'm not looking for something long term yeah. i just want the carnal pleasures yeah of that person then that's fine mm. you of course you're allowed to do that but how you speak to that person yeah. does matter yeah Be oh, definitely. because just because you're not attracted to somebody you yeah. you don't say uh get away you're gross you're, yeah it's, that's a human being and like yeah well, this is why people have issues with Grinder, and I do too. Where I've seen people on TikTok, they're very anti Grinder, and they're like, this has ruined the gay community and things like that. And I actually think it has. And I think the balanced version of me, I'm a Libra, I'm all about balance. I want to go, well, uh, Grinder is good for some people. And, and actually, I would be bold enough to say, I think, <laughs> don't come for me, that I don't think Grinder is healthy. That's not to say. I don't think hookups are healthy. Yeah. I think that's a different thing. But I think Grindr as an app it has been designed for people to discriminate against other people, mm. to talk to other people like they're a piece of dirt on their shoe. Yeah. And it's gotten gay men used to instant gratification and instant pleasure as opposed to going out, meeting someone, going on a date. If that ends in a hookup and, you're, and you want that, then that's great and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like Grindr has become the Deliveroo of gay sex yeah and i think it the app is just uh, and awful that's, and that's not great no it's not and also the i think a big thing with social media and like grinders the only oh, i'm sure there are other ones that are the grinder was the original one yeah eh? you know the anonymity of it yeah. and i get i suppose for people who are not out yeah and they 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 want and need that mm. physical connection relate whatever however you want yeah. to talk about it then I get why they use it, but again, there's a again if you if you're not out, there's a place of not accepting who you are as a human being, and that is often reflected in how they speak to people. Mm. And you know, you know, I've I, I've been on grind a long, long time ago. Mm. You know, bef, bef, back when I was when it kind of first came out. Yeah. Um, which you know before before I was in, in any relationship, yeah. But it's 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 not a if if you're using it and you're not out, mm. then it's terrifying because the thought of being outed, yeah. And most people are not bothered about outing somebody, which no. is something you don't realize until you come out. Yeah. Either. Um. Some people are. Don't get me wrong, but um. So I get why those people use it, but I think again. It's something grinder is something that is really divisive in the yeah. gay community because it is specifically asks you to put yourself into a category. Yeah. Are you a bear? Are you a otter? Are you a twink? Are you a jock? Mm -hmm. Or whatever else they have. First of all, I don't want to be any kind of animal. Yeah. On account of me not being an animal. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't want to be described as such. Yeah. I also don't want to be put into a bracket that these are the characteristics of that thing because mm. if you don't fit that 100 percent, yeah again you are going to have to adjust something yeah. about you and most men don't most men's bodies do not fit into the super skinny twink category or into the sort of graduated from a twink to an otter because you've got a little bit of hair or you're a larger man and hairy and you're a bear or you're a muscular jock like most people's bodies don't actually fit into yeah. any of those categories so then it leaves everyone else feeling really terrible about themselves yeah. and going well i need to choose a body type and i need to commit to it <laughs> and it also you know that then feeds into porn which people watch yeah it then feeds into the fetish fetishization of particular attributes or people who look a mm. particular way so the the fetish fetishization of bears mm. jocks 
twinks, whatever it is. And then again, it takes away the control of the people who are not, who don't fit into those yeah. categories because they're either trying to get into mm. one for some level of acceptance or it's like they're putting the people who are in that category on a pedestal. Yeah. And so they're giving away their, their mm. power. And, and I think it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really harmful to your, to an individual's, um, Self esteem, yeah, to always be wanting to look or feel a different way, and, and that is a yeah. big thing that feeds back into something that underpins a lot of men's experience in the gay community mm. is issues around their body and how they feel about it, yeah. And also, to give a personal example, I know that when I've seen people comment when people find out I was your boyfriend going, Oh, he's chosen a twink, I equally I've had people go, Oh, you've chosen a daddy, and I'm like. No, he chose someone who he fell in love with and who he's attracted to. And equally, I chose you, not because you're a daddy. That's got absolutely nothing to do with it. Am I, I, I chose you like for. I'm not old enough to be a daddy. I know, I hate it. I've started to be called that now. And I'm like, I suppose because I'm getting, I'm over 30. If you're over 30. Do you know what? But, but just to finish my point, that is so reductionist and offensive. Mm. I wasn't offended that someone called me a twink because I'm like, oh, I wish I was a twink. I wish I was that slender. Um, I'm not offended by that, but I'm offended that you've reduced me yeah. to a category yeah. that I am Keegan's boyfriend and I have a load of different qualities and you've reduced me to this label yeah. that I don't identify with yeah. and I don't want. Yeah. And equally the same with you. I'm annoyed that people have reduced you to that title or any other title you might have had before or label because you're you're so much, that is the last thing on my list. It, like you weren't searching through when you're on a dating app or dating in general you weren't going what where's a twink where's a twink twink, twink, twink twink you were going like you said at the start who's gonna who am i attracted to sure but who's gonna who's got my best interest at heart who do i have a laugh with who do i share values yeah. with and it really annoys me that as gay men we've sexualized everything yeah yeah and reduced uh, i think that's a really good point it's it's reductionist uh, mm. Um, I don't actually care what you've. It's like saying I don't care what you've got to say. Yeah. Show us, show us what you, how big your chopper is. Yeah. Show us your your body, mm. and I'll make a decision off the back. Yeah. You might be an absolute asshole. Yeah. But if if you, uh, which is again, if you're not getting to know someone, it's for a hookup. But it's about how you go about it. Yeah. And just, um, you know the the sliding into the DMs of. Mm you're so hot and you're the, like, I wouldn't go in with that as an opening gambit. No. no. Um, so yeah, I think, and I, I think, you know, grinder is a, a big, a big issue for, for that in the sense of it does, it is so divisive and it does make people. And, yeah. and I think anything that makes anybody feel uncomfortable or like they're being judged, we as gay men feel like we've been judged on just for on the fact that we've well. been gay. Yeah. We don't need it from each other. No. We don't need it when we're dating yeah. or when we want to hook up or mm. meet people. Um, I think, it, you know, it's just about having a bit of respect for yeah. someone else as a human being. Definitely. Um, like, and it's that anonymity. I think that's the big thing. Well, it's when a, you can yeah. hide behind, and it's same you can controls. hide behind a keyboard. Yeah, yeah, you can hide behind your phone. But linking back to saying like maybe Grinder is good for those that aren't out and they want a bit of secrecy and things like that. Um, the only other thing, and this is an extreme example, but we had a viewer write to us. I believe she's a straight female, but she was talking about her dad, and her dad passed away in his seventies, I think. Yeah, she did. Yeah, and. Um, Basically, they didn't realize until they were sorting through his stuff that he was gay. They found his grinder profile on his phone. They found, I, I'm assuming, I can't remember, but I think like gay porn or magazines or things. Yeah, subscriptions and stuff. That was yeah. Like. And she was like, I am like completely shocked by that because I had no idea. And now it's coming to terms with who my dad was and like, like this doesn't define him, but it's, it's a, a part of his identity that I never knew. Da, 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 da. But all to say, people will find out in the end. Even if you're dead and you might go, well, I'm dead, I don't care. But like people will find out and yeah. it might be quite hurtful to your family for them to find out at that stage. And this woman that wrote to us was like, I wish he'd have been able to come out when he was alive mm. um, because I would have loved him and accept him just as he is. Whereas he probably kept it secret because he went, they're all going to hate me. And, they're, mm. and this is a slight tangent, but just to say the anonymity you get found out in the end. Well, it's funny, isn't it? How, how uh, the 
I th- I think you know being on grinder or be- not being out and the clandestine nature of good word thank you the secrecy of it all mm. sometimes that carries over then when mm. you're out yeah and you're like this is I've now normalised mm. um, gay sex yeah. with secrecy mm-hmm. and you know meeting up you know, yeah. when you don't need to do that anymore yeah. so it, like there's there can be this hangover of it and i suppose if mm. if you go into grinder with or you you know on dating apps in general not necessarily just grinder where you're like mm. no 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 because someone looks a certain way has a certain thing you know you you even have people who would say no conservatives mm. or no you know yeah. like political allegiance or whatever mm. um and that's then going to carry over. Yeah. It's going to carry over into real life and it's going mm-hmm. to carry over into like actually meeting people. And, you know, it's it's amazing how many people say, I can't meet anybody. Well, if your filter yeah. is so you know, niche, yeah, is such a big list, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, you, you are being restrictive yeah because you are actually being exclusive yeah and not in the extent of exclusive as in looking to date one person mm. in the ex in the sense of exclusionary yeah. to the vast majority of human beings yeah um and, and i think that's a big thing as well and what's the harm in particularly with with dating like what's the harm in like choosing a wild card i've done that when i've dated i'm like actually i'm gonna go on a date with this person that i'm not like, I don't feel like I'm as attracted to, but like, and then I've gone on the date and gone, wow, they're either so interesting as a person, they're so funny, and that's made them more attractive to me because those are qualities that I really value. Yeah. Um, and I just think, yeah, why are the gay men like, I don't know, so got the blinkers on and narrowing it down so much to this is the only partner that I want yeah. or hookup that I want. Well, that you know, that's how, how much of a role does social media mm. and the media you know the gay, gay media at large have with fetishizing mm. these gr- tribes and groups yeah. of people that you are this and this and this and again it's really divisive yeah you know and there's a reason why we as uh people with platforms or influencers i don't really like calling us that but why we don't answer questions that are overtly sexualized whenever we do a Q&A and things like that. Because yeah. it's almost become the norm where people will ask the bold question, how big is your penis? Like, are you a top or bottom? Like, da 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 Reducing gay men into these sexual questions. Yeah. It's not because I'm ashamed of anything to do well, with that. It's well, because why should you know that? Well, that's the thing. Isn't it? The, the flip side of that is, well, why don't you want to talk about it? Are you yeah. ashamed of it? And it's... Absolutely not. But again, it becomes this fetishization. When I first came out, mm. obviously I was a rugby player and I had so many messages about what people wanted to do to me mm. or what people wanted me to do to them mm. purely because I was a, a rugby player. And I was like, this is, it made me feel really uncomfortable. It made, yeah. me, like, made me feel really devalued mm. because, you know, I, I, I'm not a piece of meat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it it also made me very aware uh, that uh, that some people some some guys just mm. you know do view you as as yeah. as a fetish. Yeah. As as a bit of porn. Mm. Um and again, you know, it, it desensitizes us as individuals to you know, the fact that people are human beings. Yeah. Well, and definitely. That, you know, people have feelings and Yeah. Uh, we 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 sometimes we forget that yeah well i'd be mortified if like if i was ever that kind of person to ask a stranger how big their penis is i'd be mortified that they've then gone well why is joel asking that That's... You, you wouldn't walk up to a woman at work and no. say what what size bra are you yeah exactly are you wearing a knicker or, yeah. knickers or, or a thong or, yeah. or what it's you, awful you just you know what's your favorite sexual position you, yeah you, you'd be horrified yeah you know, or if I think this is the OnlyFans thing, though, where it's normalized everyday people being porn stars, which, again, there's no shame in it. If you want to do that, that's great. But it's like now it's crossed the line where people feel like they can say that to me. Who's not as a normal, who's, who's, who's not, not an OnlyFans person. Yeah, who's but, not an OnlyFans yeah. person, who's not a sex worker. You feel that, like, I, that's all I can put it down to. Because I'm like, this never used to be a thing. I've been on social media for 10 years now. Yeah. It's only been a thing. You could say maybe it's since I came out. Yeah. But 
I do think it's because lo loads of regular people now do sex work, yeah. which again, great, but I'm not a sex worker, so therefore don't ask me those questions. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah, that's that's not my line of yeah. expertise or yeah. work. Like, don't. I can point you in the direction of hundreds of people who would answer those questions and good on can, them yeah. and they're happy with that. Well, I'm sure, just type it in. Yeah. <laughs> well, where's your voice gone? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm recovering from a cold. Yeah, I, but you're right. You know, it does. Mm -hmm. It is that. Um, <clears throat> it's like uh, uh, that they ha that people feel that they have a right mm. to, and maybe that's because you, you or I or people are people of notoriety and have a platform. Yeah. It's like, well, you're putting your life out yeah. there, but I'm putting parts of my life out there and it's yeah. my choice mm. what i share with you just like it is when people fill in a grinder profile it's their choice what they share yeah. and and things like that so but i think it's important to bear that in mind and just yeah. treat people no like pun intended <laughs> to bear that in mind yes, Joe, okay, thank you um just remember that people are human beings yeah. at all points. And above everything else. They're human beings above being a piece of meat or be, be, a sexual... Or a bear. Yeah. Or a, you know, uh, what are some of the... A chub or twink. Yeah. Or, or a twunk. A twunk. That's a new one. Um, whatever. You know, people are human beings above all else. And, you know, it might sound a bit woo-wah-wee-wah, -wah, mm. but I think, you know, the world would be a hell of a lot better place if we yeah. all just treated people like human beings and... Yeah, you know, remembered that. Yeah. And also, if you're gonna message somebody, whether it's on Grind, you know, a strange, a stranger, you know, how would you feel about your mum reading that? Yeah, bear that in mind. Yeah, twink that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's true. And uh, yeah, I have nothing more to say on that. I feel like we've we've said our piece. Just don't treat people like pieces of meat. Yeah, and just remember that. Think with your brain, not with your. Peen. Peen. And just Peen. because somebody is something on, on paper, yeah. all the stats that might make them desirable, just remember that that person might not be supportive. That yeah. person might not be funny. Yeah. That person might not have your best interests at yeah. heart and want to support you and build a healthy relationship with you. Yeah. It, uh, certainly when you're dating and you're looking for a long-term relationship, those things are a hell of a lot more important oh, definitely. than someone being over six foot or having a big chopper. Yeah, more fulfilling. Yeah, I nearly made a joke about fulfilling and penis size then, but I'm not going to let you do that if you want to do it. No, because that would be sexualizing the podcast. Exactly. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so, seeing as we're wrapping it up, what is the thing that you want to share with the listeners and the viewers? Well, I think it's got to be another TV show. Sorry that both of mine were TV shows recently. Um, it's a show called Julia. Oh, the Sarah Lancashire one. Yeah. Yeah, if you love Happy Valley and you yeah. love Sarah Lancashire. Mm -hmm. um, it's nothing like Happy Valley. It's nothing <laughs> like Happy Valley. But if you love keeping up appearances. Yeah, she's Pat very high since she's UK. She's very Patricia Routledge in yeah. keeping up appearances, isn't she? Well, it's so good. Julia, um, I forgot her surname, but Julia Julie was... Julia Child. Julia Child, that's it. She was the first sort of TV chef, or she wrote a cookbook, which was one mm. of the first cookbooks, and it basically documents her rise to fame as on TV. a female, well, a cook on TV. Um, and Sarah Lancashire is incredible. It's a very funny show. And, and it's the guy it. from, um, there's two people from Fraser in it, actually. I love Fraser. Yeah. Um, there's Niles, I can't remember the actor's name, and Fraser's first wife. Isn't it Frasier? Fraser. Fraser, Frasier. I don't know. I've never seen it. So there you go, the linguist. Um, so yeah, give that a watch. And if you've not yeah. watched Happy Valley, um, and also yeah. there's a, a Sarah Lancashire was in a play called Betty Blue Eyes, and mm. I one of my go-to numbers is a song called Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> don't sing it, Joe. Um, <laughs> I end really. up getting on the table. You will. <laughs> Woo. Um, yeah. So there you yeah, go. Good Sarah Lancashire loving. We love Sarah At the Sarah end Lancashire. of an episode, talking about grounded and sexual preferences. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Keeping that, it light. That is the eclectic nature of this show. Exactly. <laughs> well, if you enjoyed it, please rate us on Apple Podcasts. Five stars, if you would. That would help us out. Yeah. And leave us a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to get in touch and send us a, an email, then you can do that. Hello at happyhealthyhomo.com. 
nudesnudes.com. And no nudes, please. Uh, unsolicited <laughs> nudes are also a big no-no in the gay yeah, community. Yeah. So yeah. do not send nudes. unsolicited no, nudes. No, 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 no. <laughs> and see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.